9. John chapter 9 is uh, one of the few chapters in the Gospels that one story takes up the entire chapter. That's unusual. Usually the Lord will tell a, tell a parable and then he'll jump into something else or it'll be talking about the kingdom of heaven and then it'll go into something else. But in John chapter 9, the whole chapter is about one man and his conversion and his miracle of getting his sight back. He was blind. And this man is a picture of a person being saved. And that's what we we'll want to look at just for a real short few minutes tonight, and uh, we'll, we'll go. Uh, title of the message, Darkness to Light. From Darkness to Light. I preached this morning on a great woman. And if you didn't get it, you need to get it. Uh, if you, they might have copies of it tonight, I don't know. But you need to get it. A great woman. And you'll find out how and what you need to do to be a great woman in the Bible. But here in John chapter number 9 this evening, we'll... Uh, We'll look here at the story here of this blind man who got his sight, and you're going to be amazed at the similarities you see between the Lord touching you and what he did for this man. We're not going to read it all. I'd like to, but it's 41 verses. So we're going to read quite a bit, though. Starting with verse number 1, And as Jesus passed by... That's enough right there to shout about. I'm glad he passed by one day, ain't you? I'm glad he came by Nebo Baptist Church up there one day. When a little boy, 18 years old, was needing to get saved, and Jesus passed by. Thank God. And he saw a man. You know, that man was blind. He couldn't see Jesus, but Jesus could see him. That's the main thing. Whether we can see the Lord tonight is not the main thing. The fact that he can see us. Well, look at it. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. Unusual way to do it, isn't it? And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, when they, and they, <laughs> excuse me, which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, this is he. And others said, he like him. He just looks like him. That's not really him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes open? Man, you talk about an open door to witness. And he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received strength. Then sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. And they brought to the uh, Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. And they say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall ask, speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. And for the Jews had agreed already that if any man 
did confess that he was the Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Now look at verse 25, this amazing answer. Great answer down in history. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. But one thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Amen, hallelujah, glory to God. I want to, uh, we'll talk about the rest of that verse tonight, uh, chapter, but I want us to talk about this, this man receiving his sight. As Jesus passed by, he did pass by. He saw a man. He was uh, uh, blind from his birth, and just like me and you were, blind in sin. And the Lord did this miracle quickly. We'll make these little observations, and then we'll go. Get this from the Word of God. Number one, his blindness. He was blind from birth. He never could or had seen, just as you and I are spiritually. Have you ever met anybody, they say, Oh, I don't see why you have to read the Bible all the time. I don't see what's wrong with this. I don't, I don't see why you have to do this. I don't see why you think yours is right and everybody else is wrong. I don't see why uh, you have to, why, why is this wrong? I don't see what's wrong with the TV show. I don't see anything wrong with rock music. I don't see anything. You hear what I say all the time. I don't see. I don't see. I don't see. I don't see. When a person continually says, I don't see, they are really saying, I am blind. A blind person can't see. I used to couldn't see that either. I see it now. I know I can see plain as day what's wrong with the, the things of this world. Isn't it amazing how that before you're saved, you don't, it's hardly, you don't see nothing wrong, and as soon as you get saved, everything's wrong, everything. I remember, I remember when these boys used to go to the beach, down at Myrtle Beach before I got saved, and I thought, man, this is a fun place. I love this place. And about, uh, I've been saved, I got saved 18, 19. A bunch of us went down on a missionary journey. I've been saved about two years, and we took tracks to go down there and witness. And I got out of the car, and I thought, my Lord, this place has gone to hell. This is all. I, I thought, how did it get so wicked in two years? The truth is, the truth is, it was that wicked. I just couldn't see it. My eyes were not open. And I worry about somebody that's constantly saying, well, I don't see nothing wrong with this. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Plain as day, I mean, plain as a nose on your face, uh, but don't see anything wrong with it. And the Bible said his his blindness. He couldn't see Jesus, but Jesus could see him. And the Bible said they come to him, and they said, uh, uh, why was this man born blind? Did, did he do something really, really bad, or did his parents do something terrible that made him blind? And the Lord said, no, neither hath this man sinned or his parents. He wasn't saying this perfect. He didn't mean that. He, he meant Neither one of them sin resulted in his blindness. He said, but for the glory of God, his, this sickness is his, is his, come on him. In other words, he let him be blind just so he could heal him and get the glory. So we notice tonight his blindness. He was, uh, he was uh, not responsible for being born blind, but he was responsible for accepting or rejecting the message that would heal him. You're not responsible for being born a sinner. You are responsible for accepting in the remedy that God made for your sin. I've heard people say, uh, lots of times, people uh, write on our internet sites and stuff and say, that's not fair. I didn't ask to be born into this world. God can't hold me responsible for what I do. I didn't ask for this. That's true. You didn't ask. Uh, if, 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 uh, if this building caught on fire tonight, I may not set the thing on fire. It may not be my fault that this building's on fire. But if I don't run out the door, it's my fault. It's not my fault sins in this world. It's not my fault you're a sinner and I'm a sinner. It is my fault if I don't accept the remedy that the Lord paid for my sin. Do you understand that? Notice his blindness. Secondly tonight, notice his deliverance. His deliverance. His eyes were anointed with clay. This could represent conviction. Uh, then he was told, go wash. Uh, in other words, the Lord came to him one day and he said, uh, all right now, I'm going to make you better. And listen to this. The Lord spat on the ground, spit on the ground and picked it up. 
Today's, today's modern day religious people would die. Take that to the average First Baptist or First Methodist church and say, now we're going to spit in the mud and put it on your eyes and watch what happens. Uh, they'd say, I'll, uh, you, uh, you crazy? That's what makes people say, I don't believe. You know why the Lord did that? Because the natural man receiveth not the things that be of God. You know why the Lord did that? He didn't have to do that. He, didn't, he, he, didn't, he could have just went, pound. He didn't even have to touch him if he didn't want to. He could have just said, be open, and he, his eyes would have been open. But he did that for a reason. That represents conviction. That represents uh, the man's humility in coming to him. I'll never forget a few days before I got saved, I started feeling miserable. I remember feeling miserable. Before I got saved, um, you know, y'all know my testimony. But I've told it so many times. I didn't tell you all the details, but uh, basically y'all know everything my whole life just about uh, when I was growing up. And uh, I remember when we was playing ball, and we used to play basketball hours every day. Hours. I mean hours. We were on the asphalt. Uh, boys nowadays, they think it's terrible if you've got a gym and ain't air conditioned. We played in the summertime on asphalt outside. Neck, sun, burn, ever, all, both elbows, both knees were scabbed the entire summer. And I'm not lying. I mean, you, you think it's bad falling on the gym floor, fall on asphalt. Uh, it'll do, it'll, it'll take the height off of you. And we'd play out there and we played for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And I'll never forget, right before I got saved, I remember thinking, uh, is this all there is to life? I mean, uh, playing ball and eating and going places and seeing your friends and going to movies. And, and I remember feeling some kind of emptiness on the inside of me. You know what that was? That was the, the conviction settling in on me. And then that revival started up there at Nebo, and my, my cousin... Linda Houck's sister, Jackie, worked at the store there in Nebo. And me and we walked in there and she said, Danny, you boys ought to come to our revival. And I remember thinking, oh, I said, oh, okay. I had no intention, none whatsoever of going. And then I went, uh, we was driving around and they were having a clean up Nebo day or something like that. And there was people all over Nebo picking up uh, Trash on the side of the road, putting it in, and, and we were riding around. I had this little OMG and had the top down on that thing. And I remember driving up and down the road, and we went out to the bound behind the school and started playing ball. And we'd take a speaker out of that thing, little old speaker, and set it on the, the trunk of that car, turn that music up real loud, and get out here and play ball and listen to that music. And I remember there was a group over there, and we said, Boy, some weird looking people. Who's that? And they said, That's these church people. They're up there at that revival at Nebo, and there was a group from Appalachia. Appalachian State University, and um, I forgot the name of it. It was um, uh, had a, some kind of catchy little youth group title, and they was really got on fire for the Lord. And uh, I thought, oh, church people. I, I mean, I didn't say anything against it, but I remember thinking, I, I don't know, but there was something drawing me. There was something pulling me. And then I heard that one of my friends got saved, and when I heard that, a convicting arrow stuck in my heart. And right then, I got under conviction. That was a picture of what happened to the guy. He made that spittle and put it on his eyes. He was getting ready to heal him. He was getting ready to bring him to the Lord. He put clay in his eyes. Now, that would normally make a seeing man blind. But in this case, uh, the Lord used it to make a blind man see. And, the, and ladies and gentlemen, his deliverance. He, he made him... He, took him out of there and made him clean and, and um, uh, he, he took him out of there and he put his hand on there, bam, and his eyes were open. The night I got saved, it didn't take six months of training. I didn't have to go through a course and be confirmed. I didn't have to uh, learn the seven steps of how to be a Christian. The night, I mean, I'd been saved an hour and I was sitting on the front row of the church like this right here and that old preacher got up that night and he looked right down at me and I'll never forget it. You've heard me say it. He looked right down at me and said, young man, did you get everything straight? And I said, yes, sir. I had never seen him. He had never seen me. There's about 40 or 50 kids kids in the altar that night bawling and my pastor told me later he said to old Joe the old man of God called him over there and he said you see that boy laying right there he said God is going to use him now I didn't know that till I'd been saved a little while and when I got baptized 
The preacher told that to the whole congregation. And I thought, Lord have mercy. Oh, the great God of glory has come my way. The God of heaven that made the world had paid me a visit. Little Danny, right here in Nebo, North Carolina. And I still believe tonight being saved is the greatest thing that can ever happen to a human being on this earth. There ain't nothing in the world like getting saved. I mean, if you, I mean, if you ever, ever ask somebody, are you saved? And they say, well, I was baptized when I was nine. Hey, something wrong with them, that testimony. You say, are you saved? They say, well, I'm a Methodist. I mean, listen, when you, if you ask, am I saved? I'd never even think of my baptism. I'd never think about joining the church. My, my mind would go to that night when he opened my eyes. Thank God I was blind, but hallelujah, now I see. Amen? His deliverance. Well, let me say thirdly this evening, his confession, his confession. Now, the neighbors asked him. They knew he was different, but they couldn't explain it. They come to him, they said, uh, are you that blind? He said, yes, sir, that's me. You're not him. You're his twin brother. How many fingers I got up? He said, three. They said, hey, you're not really him. He said, I am too. I ain't got no twin brother. I'm him. And they were amazed. They were absolutely amazed. They could not believe that uh, what had happened to him. They knew he was different. And I want to say, when I got saved, my friends knew I was different. Didn't yours? If they didn't, something ain't right. I mean, immediately, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I backslid a few hours after I got saved and, and de denied being saved to a boy at work the next day because I was chicken. I was scared and I felt terrible. I'd been saved about 12 hours and I, I, did, I didn't stand up and tell him when I should have and I'm ashamed of that. But I'm telling you after that I did. I'm, t I'm telling you I said I went to church. I got saved. My, my friends come out to the store the next day, the next evening, at, uh, at Thursday evening. And we were sitting on these drink cartons at the store like this. Remember the old drink cartons, you had uh, wooden drink cartons, we were sitting on them and uh, my buddy pulled up, he had a little Volkswagen, he pulled up gas station, he said let's go play ball, I said Kate, he said why not, I said we're going to church got saved last night and I'm telling you his mouth fell open, his jaw dropped down here, he couldn't believe it you got, Danny Castle got saved. You got saved. I said, that's right. And buddy, he went home, got dressed, and come to church, and he got saved that night. That's how strong God's power was working in our community. I mean, buddy, when it's on like that, it's a good time to get in. His confession, he said, the man that is called Jesus made clay out of the spittle and anointed my eyes, and therefore I see. I used to make all kinds of excuses for sin. I used to say, I don't see nothing wrong with this. How long is long? You know, your hair. I don't see nothing wrong with that music. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, my eyes were open, wide open. And from then on, I could see and I can still see tonight. His confession. They saw him doing, they saw him doing things they'd never seen before. They saw him reading the Bible. They said, did you see that blind man over there reading the Bible? Somebody said, how can a blind man read the Bible? Well, look, there he is. Well, he ain't blind. That's right, but he was. He was not. Don't you remember? He sat down here for years. I mean, uh, and uh, he, he done got him a job and everything. Got off Social Security or, and welfare and, and done straightened up and paying his bills and, and helping his family. No, that can't be. That can't be. And there was debate over him. People were talking about him. People, I'm going to tell you something. When you get saved, the neighbors see a difference and they start talking. Your family sees a difference and they start talking. I, and they say, uh, what in the world has happened to him? I had some kin folks that were Christians and they thought I was the meanest thing in the world before I got saved. And then I got saved. They didn't want their kids running around me. They said, Danny, will be a bad influence on you. And then when I got saved, I got so saved, they didn't want their kids to be around me then. Because then we was going to give out tracts and preach on the street. And I thought, hey, you didn't like me that way and you don't like me this way. That's the way them middle of the road religious people are, they're just about, brother, you be out sinning than really getting fired up for God. They want you to be religious, but just enough to fit in. You know, don't do nothing too bad. Don't get thrown in jail or nothing. But good Lord, don't go giving out tracts and fasting and read the Bible. Oh, God, we can't stand that. And that old boy put him under conviction. Number four, his confession. He couldn't answer all their intellectual questions. He knew about nothing but Jesus. They come to him and they said, who did this? How did he do this? 
He said, I don't know how he did it. Explain to us. What do you mean born again? What do you mean saved? I don't understand why. What, where did you learn this? He said, I didn't learn it. It just happened to me. They said, what did you read? He said, I didn't read nothing. They said, who told you this? He said, nobody told me nothing. They said, well, what happened to you? He said, a man that is called Jesus touched me and I can see. Listen, people, that's what me and you got tonight. We got the same thing, same thing. We didn't get religious. I didn't become a Baptist. I had no desire to be a Baptist or a Methodist or a Presbyterian. The Lord come. I'm not the Lord. I didn't get religion. Thank God I got Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I got assurance. And that's what people can't stand. They can't stand it. They said, well, well, how'd he do it? He said, I don't know how he did it. Well, you don't know much, do you? He said, I sure don't. But there's one thing I know. I used to be blind, now I can see. I I can't answer all your religious questions, but I once was blind, and now I see. Number five, his testimony. He said, uh, they said, he's a prophet. He said, I reckon he is. And now he's a priest, and then he'll, one day he'll be a king. He started getting to them. They started getting under conviction. He nailed it down, preached them a good sermon, buddy. You know how the mouth of babes and sucklings, the Lord perfected praise. And you know something? Sometimes God will take a person that ain't been saved a week and preach some of the best sermons that's ever been preached. Some, I've heard some of the best uh, theological reason I've ever heard in my life out of people that ain't been saved six months. And it's just like the Holy Spirit just gives it to them. And the Lord just in them. And I mean, they're clear. You know, uh, you don't, let me tell you something, people. You don't understand the Bible or God by your education or by your learning or by your IQ. You, the way you understand the Bible is in your heart right with the author of the Bible. Remember when Jesus said, and then he opened other understanding that they might understand the scriptures? The way to understand the scriptures is the author. Knowing the author. The the closer you get your heart right with God, the more that scripture opens up to you. Isn't that right? That's right. It's not by intellectual reasoning. It's not by individual knowledge or, or, or skill. It's by divine revelation you get the scripture. Number six, his persecution. Don't be surprised if you, quote, catch it when you get right with God. They got mad and cast it out, cast him out. Isn't that the way religious people do? They said, uh, now you would think them great, wonderful religious people would say, wow, we thank the Lord for this young man. He sat out there all these years blind, and now he can see. Isn't it wonderful, folks? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You, you'd think they'd do that. You'd think they'd say, wow, isn't it great what God's doing in our community? No, 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 no. Religious people don't like anything that they don't have a direct part of or they don't, can't control. And the work of God is something they cannot control. The world hates a preacher they can't control. The world hates a a Christian that they cannot. They say, well, you you have to come and go through our system in order to be a Christian. Uh Uh-uh. He's just out there telling everybody. He can see, he can see, he can see. You know what they got mad about? They got mad about the authority and the great power and the people slipping away from them and people quit looking to them for the answers and started looking right to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's what they couldn't stand. The religious hierarchy was beginning to sink and the Lord was being magnified. His persecution. They didn't say, thank God for this young man. They said, you fanatic, you're carrying it too far. We had, uh, when we first got saved, this boy got on fire for the Lord and he's mean as a snake for it. He got right with God. We was all going to give out tracts one night and his daddy was a preacher, his mama, preacher's wife, and we went in to ask him, said, uh, can so-and-so go give out tracts with us tonight? And his, the preacher's wife looked at us boys. We was about 18 or 19. And she said, now listen, boys. You, you can't save the world. You can carry this too far. This is a preacher's wife. In other words, what she was saying is, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. You, you guys are... Well, any, they, now, in other words, our life was actually putting them under conviction. And that's supposedly been saved. How many of you ever had that happen to you? 
Have you ever had that happen to you? When somebody, you get right with God and on fire for the Lord, and you go around your aunt or your uncle or your family, and they're all supposed to have been saved 15 years, and they look at you like, who are you trying to teach me? I've been in this a long time. Long. And the truth is, they're backslid, and you're putting them under conviction because your heart's right, and you're making them feel guilty. That's an awful fix for a religious person to get into. He made them feel bad. He said, I don't know. You, you ask me about stuff I don't know. One thing about it, he touched me and I can see, and everybody went, Woo! Hallelujah. And they went, oh, It just killed them that it was out of their hands and out of their control what the Lord had done for that old boy. Number seven, and I'm done. But lastly, his satisfaction. The Bible said in verse 35, 6, 7, and 8, he worshipped Jesus. He worshipped Jesus. They looked at him and said, Hey, uh, since you got your eyes open, come over here to our church and give you testimony. Uh, no, nah, I'm busy. Uh, come over here. To, they all wanted him after he got saved. Amazing how they come out of the woodwork after you get right in it. People you worked with for years, you didn't even know they went to church. And as soon as you went in there and I told them you got saved, I said, oh, oh, well, let me tell you how wrong your church is. You need to come to mine. And you're going to say, where, where was you all them years and I was going to hell? All of a sudden, you're, you're some authority going to tell me how to live my life and I didn't even know you were supposed to be a Christian. You never said a word to me about it for all these years. We've all had people like that come, suddenly get real religious. Our aunts and our uncles, and I, they come from the, the, the Masonic Lodge and, and they've been... Oh, going to lodge for years and they, they've done this for years and uh, oh I was going to church for you was born son don't you try to tell me don't try to instruct me I knew I, and they ain't even never read the Bible they're full of the devil uh, you're, you're making them feel guilty and boy that old boy looked at them and he said look you, you people I don't know about you you didn't help me when I, I want to see Jesus wherever Jesus is that's where I want to be I want to see the Lord I want to see him him that opened my eyes. I close with this story tonight. Years ago, uh, this happened a long time ago. They said uh, this boy uh, was blind. And uh, there come a doctor over here from England. This happened like, like way back in the 40s or 50s or something like that. And they said, uh, they said this doctor, he, uh, I went over there and he started performing surgery in which some blind patients could could received their sight. And they said that, that, old, that doctor came and they finally got a hold of him. And they said, sir, we can't pay you. We don't have the money, but if you could possibly help our son, we'd give anything in the world if you could. And he said a date. He said, I'll do it for him. I'll do it. Won't charge y'all nothing. And they said a date. They brought him into the hospital. That boy was in the hospital and they laid him in there and the doctor went in and every how they did it then, when they done that delicate surgery on those eyes and he said when he got through the eyes he went out and told the parents they said now it's going to be it's going to be about a month uh, before we uh, know if it's a success or not we're just going to have to delicately take them out. He had 32 bandages on his eyes just layers and layers they said I want you to take off one layer every day and so the light won't hit him and uh, so all of a sudden if it worked and if it worked and they said uh, every day for, a, for a 30 days they'd go in there and peel off one of them bandages finally it got down to the last couple of days and they're going to peel off that last couple of bandages and they said uh, got it down only one more to go he said mama is it going to work she said I don't know honey we'll know tomorrow they put him out there that day they put that young man out there that day and he's going to peel off that last one and they said I know what let's do let's take him out here in the yard it was a beautiful day just like just like today was the sun was shining green leaves on the trees birds out there you know hollering and everything was beautiful and they said let us see the first I want to see the, the first thing he ever sees let it be something beautiful. And they said, here he goes. They took him out there and put him in that chair. And that mama took like that and peeled that last bandage off of his eyes. And when she did, she looked like that and she held her breath. And that old boy went like that and squinted his eyes. He went like that and squinted his eyes. He looked and he said, Mama, Mama, is this heaven? And she said, no, son. This is the backyard of the hospital. He said, this is the tree, the flower. He said, you didn't tell me it's this beautiful. She said, we tried to, but you was blind. You couldn't see. 
And she, she said, uh, what, what would you like to see? He said, Mama, all this is beautiful and all this is great. But he said, I want to see the man that opened my eyes. Where's that doctor? And they went and got him. And I'm telling you, I've heard that story and I thought, Lord, in mercy, one of these glorious days, people, it's really going to happen. We're going to walk in there and them, thank God, them gold streets, them gates are going to open and we're going to say, Woo! This is heaven. But about that time, it's going to hit us. I want to see the man that opened my eyes. I, where's he at? And they'll say, there he is. There's the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll see him. And then Fanny Crosby said, we shall see him. We, I shall know him. I shall know him. And redeemed by his side, I shall stand. I shall know him. I shall know him by the prince of the nails in his hand. That's how a blind man got his sight. We'll see him forever and ever and ever. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Amen. Miss Desi, come to the piano. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed tonight. You want to see him? You want to see him one day? You want to see him one day? Get down here on your knees, young person. Serve God. She's playing softly. Get down here on our knees tonight and worship the one that opened our eyes. Maybe you want to just come down here and get down on your knees and say, Lord, I thank you that one day